Hi, buddies. Jose at Wire Ninjas. We build systems and circuits of integrity. We're also Dream Media's preferred partner in the New Jersey area, and that means two things. We make great content for you guys here on YouTube. Number two, if you need system design, sales, service, parts, equipment, call Dream Media. They'll take great care of you. Today we are in Montgomery or Skillman, New Jersey, neighboring towns. Uh, and we're going to show you how to ceiling mount a projector, particularly an Epson 5050, as well as the mount that's made for this unit. So, uh, we're doing it to drywall and we have standard framing, kind of. So, let's take a look. So, let's take a look at some of the items we need. Number one, we need a projector. Number two, we need a mount. Now, remember I said this is the mount made for this projector. If you get a universal, it will be a little bit different process. I recommend you get the best universal mount you can. Uh, don't cheap out on a mount, you will regret it. Uh, I like this projector and this mount because they're made for each other. So, let's take a look at the mount box. You have one instruction, you have one pole, you have one mounting bracket here. So we have the, the ceiling mount part. We have the pole, the interconnecting pole that goes to the ceiling mount part. Everything's pre-painted. Not doing any painting today, although it kind of looks like I did. Um, and then you have the top part of the mount hidden inside are the keys. Then you have a big plate that is made for this projector. As you can see, we have nine points. Really nice stuff here. This is going to get mounted to the projector. This is going to get mounted to the ceiling. This will connect the two items. And then this is going to be our leveling adjust, four-way level adjust. So a couple other things. We have some extra safety instructions or guides. We have a little bit of hardware to mount this to this and then a locking screw for this and this. And then we have a safety cable. So what we're going to focus on today is, is just getting this mount up. How do I go about this? So let's take into account the process. Number one, we have to establish uh, two things. Number one, the, the throw distance as well as the center line. So uh, with anything, we need a height and center. We need two measurements to work off of so we can get anything mounted appropriately. So let's start with the throw distance. Throw distance, you must take into account the projector in question, the projector you are installing there and then. Every projector is different. They have different zoom, they have different calibration, and they have different throw distance. Number two, the screen. So what size screen are you using? Uh, today we're doing a 133. We're actually waiting for a screen, so we'll get back and get that installed as soon as she ships in. But for calculating throw distance, you need the projector model as well as the screen size. Find yourself a throw distance calculator, whether it's from Epson Direct or there's plenty of aftermarket or you know, different websites that offer throw distance calculators. Figure out your throw distance. That's number one. And then we have to make sure we're on center. So for center, this screen for this room is getting centered on this wall. The measurement of the entire wall is 161.5. That gives us a halfway center on the back wall, respectively, of what, 80.75? 80, 80 Sorry, there's items. So we have 80.75 halfway center point. That's going to be our first measurement. The second measurement is the throw distance. So we've taken into account all these parameters already. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing up. We're landing. <laughs> Sorry, there's activity. <laughs> It just throws my whole train up. All right, so we have our measurements. So given we have our measurements, we can go ahead with the mounting process. Now, we're gonna take our ceiling mount bracket, place it accordingly with the measurements that were taken. Huh? Gotta make sure and check for studs. Make sure you're landing at least So we have a fun house here. So I'm just double checking all my, my stud location because I hate Zircon, but also because the framing seems to be a little bit slant here at this home, which is quite common. 
So I'm lining this up, making sure I'm hitting two points on a stud. After I know I've hit two points on a stud, I'm gonna just take a pencil and mark all four points. So remember, two, two points are on a stud, two points are off a stud. We're gonna accommodate that with some special hardware. So now we have four points, one, two, three, four, bang, bang. So let's get our toggle screws in so that we can accommodate the two points that are not being held up by a stud. If you don't have studs, that's a whole nother video. So for a toggle screw, you're gonna need a half inch hole, which I'm doing now. Probably should wear eye protection. If I leave anything out, it's because we're on a live site and I try to get these videos in for you guys, take some time aside. And I apologize, but we're doing our best. So toggles are going in. We're gonna put one toggle in. Snapper. We're gonna put our other toggle in. Snapper. Okay, so now we have two toggles in, which means we can get this bad boy almost up. This is all the, also, this is the prerequisite for, for getting our wire runs done here. We can't begin to wire up the projector until we have the mount in place. Unless we have a mount in place with a mounting solution, we don't know where our gang is going to be cut out for, you know, the, the, the low and high voltage circuits the projector needs. So we can hand drive these, I guess, because we didn't prepare and get a hand driver. We'll hand drive these. We'll get her in position there. That's right, I'll grab a hand driver. Let's see, I should have one here because we're fixing the tool, so I should have a hand driver, but apparently I don't. So we're gonna use a flat head. I have three flat heads and no Phillips head in my bag. I don't know, I see these posts and stuff and it's like, how can, I don't know, it's like the most perfect tool set, but it just doesn't make sense in a real world. Like, are you actually doing any work on a real site? How could your tools be perfect? I guess if you work alone, maybe? That's the only way I could see it being perfect all the time. All right, so that's good, that's pretty strong. I can probably, yeah, that's pretty damn strong. But we're gonna go a little bit further and we're gonna use two of these bad guys, these little torque screws. Now you could say, Jose, I should be using a lag screw. Dude, these are strong, they're great. And they're long enough to go a deep, a good fair amount into the stud. I think these are sufficient. These in a toggle, I don't know. So let's get these bad boys in. The mount's in place, she's in line with the stud. The other thing is with these, there's no piloting like there is with the lag, which is really nice. You just going straight in, center through the stud, she's beautiful. Um, I think we should get a washer, right, Steve? Let me get some washer. Oh God, another video where I'm searching for washers. <laughs> oh. right, let's see, I got one there. That's good, that'll be cool. I got another one, is that metal? It's not metal. This one, maybe, crush washer, would that work? Who knows, right? Can double up. Yeah, I'll just double up. Double up on my washers. All right, cool. So, some washers. And let's get these bad boys in there. Of course, the Torx has failed. All right, I think we have the right bit here. Yeah, I'd say we have the right bit there. Okay, well, we sacrificed a bit because that probably wasn't the right bit, but we got her nice and tight. That's the goal. So now we have two of these, oh, those are almost four inch screws of these special type wood Torx screws holding this against the stud and we have two toggles. The last thing I would say here is let's check the torque on the toggles because I saw her pulling the drywall a little bit, which means she's tight on those studs. Yeah, this is good, torqued and torqued. All right, all four are good, all four are up. Now, 
And locking screw probably should go in the back. But for all video intensive purposes, let's continue. So mount goes up, pole goes in. Then I think we have to work on the back side here for this projector. So let's get these screws in. Let's put this away appropriately because these little guys are kind of like to get lost. So let's get one of these. We'll get get our safety items here. And we'll get the screws and the pentalobular whatever security allen key. So we have a few screws here. And we have nine of them to kind of sink in there. So nice long video of me putting screws in here. <laughs> all right. They're all driven in. Let's finish them. Torque. Torque. Torqued, 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 wow, that's too much, torqued, and torqued. All right, now we have these two guys left. We have our Allen key. And then we have our little mounting plate thing or whatever thing, piece. This is like our four-way adjustable thing. This is what we want to use to get our adjustabilities. And what I like to do is make sure that, okay, this is good, cool. That's kind of in place. So there's uh, two of these. One is a security, one's a non-security. So if you're in a commercial setting, I would recommend the security bit. But if you're just at home, use a regular Allen because if you use this, you'll never be able to get it off without the pentalobular security tool. So I guess that's what we call a pro tip. <laughs> I really am an ass. <laughs> ah, all right. Let's go. So we're going to pop this in. We can tighten it, but not fully until our final adjustments are made, I would say. This might need a little bit of tilt. We're gonna have to make sure that the projector's on center. There we go. I have her tight, but not, oh, apparently too tight. So I'm gonna leave the key in there for later adjustments. That'll be nice to like quickly adjust, like open, adjust, close. So she's gonna stay there for at least for now. And then we're gonna put this aside. We'll put it at the rack for safekeeping. And then, we will get our key. Where'd our key go? Lost the keys. We gotta grab our little keys. And I think we have to open it up. It's actually been a while, dude. I've been doing data for a couple weeks now, so. So I think we need our little security key, which allows us to open and close, yes. So you have to key it open, and then get on the side, Steve. So check it out. Key goes in. Turn the key, and then you're allowed to open and close, lock and unlock the projector. So we're gonna open it and then throw our projector up. Let's move the ladder a little bit. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. All right, here you go, Steve. So the battery cut off. At 7%, the camera turned off because it's what GoPro does. But so once you get your projector up and in place, you let's I'm not sure what we missed here, so let's go start from the beginning. So we're gonna put the projector up, it's gonna go through the holes, you're gonna slide it forward. There's six pins that are seating themselves. Then you can close this latch. See the latch, Steve? Let me show the latch. See the latch? Close the latch. I would recommend again, oh geez, if you're in a home setting, leave the key in here. We don't need the security. Well, hopefully no one will steal your projector at your own house. That would be very bad. It would be funny, but it, wouldn't be, it would not be good. Okay, let's try to figure out how to put a key in. There you go. Yeah, I would leave the key in there. 
And that's about it. That's how you mount a projector. Now let's recap. We have throw distance to take into account. We have center to take into account, especially if your projector lacks the lens shift feature, which Epson has such a good lens shift. Um, so we need those two measurements. Then you need to find a stud. Like I said, if you don't have a stud, that's a whole other video. We just happen to have a stud running right down the middle here, which is just beautiful and almost never the case. But good situation for a video for you guys. So we caught two screws on the stud. We caught two toggles. Ceiling mount bracket goes up, pole goes up, projector gets mounted to this backing plate, and then it all comes together. Next steps would be actually getting the, the image corrected, which we'll shoot another video on for you guys. But this is how you mount a projector. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.